Welcome to this episode of Island by Film. My name is Wes. Today I want to talk to you about my most recent camera purchase, the Canon 5D Classic, and why it might be the best camera that I've used in a very long while. Let's get going. Okay, so quite a number of years ago, I was a family and wedding portrait shooter, and this was a part-time job of mine, and I absolutely loved doing this. And during that period of time, I shot with the Canon line of equipment, and specifically, I shot with the Canon 6D. I've talked about this a little bit on my channel before, uh, but I really loved the ergonomics of that camera, and it was just a solid, solid workhorse. So about a month and a half ago, I went on the hunt to see if I could find myself a 6D, and on my searching on the internet, I discovered a camera that is quite a bit older than the 60. In fact, this camera is 20 years old. I discovered the Canon 5D Classic. This camera has developed quite a cult following for a variety of different reasons, but the first reason that caught my attention was the sheer value of this camera. In fact, this camera itself, I purchased for $175. Now, I acknowledge that that was a specifically exceptional bargain and I can talk about that a little bit later in the video. Uh, but for realistically under $300, you can purchase yourself a full frame camera. Um, and the body alone normally on these cameras would have sold for between two and $3,000 when it was brand new. So li literally it's worth 10% of its original value right now, which is a, an incredible bargain. And in fact, some professionals still use this camera to this day because the image quality is that renowned. Okay, so in my hunt for the Canon 5D Classic, I found this one specifically on the used market, Facebook Marketplace. I ended up purchasing this camera for $325. Upon bringing the camera back home, pulling it out of the bag, giving it further inspection, I realized that the actual mirror from the prism had come off the actual shutter itself. And I was extremely upset at that point. I reached out to the seller and said, hey, listen, not sure if you realize, but this camera's currently not usable at all. They were in fact selling it for another individual. They didn't re not realize that. So they immediately refunded me $150 back, uh, which I really appreciated, but I still needed to get this camera fixed did a bit of research online, and within an evening I was able to reattach the mirror on this camera and it's been fine ever since. In fact, there are a ton of videos on how to do this. The specific thing that you wanna watch out for is the specific serial number range of the Canon 5D Classic that you purchase. Some of the older serial number ranges, Canon had already resolved this issue, but this one specifically, uh, the issue wasn't resolved. In fact, I think the mirror's likely been on this cat off of this camera for many, many, many years. That's why it's in such pristine condition. But really, it was a really simple fix. It was a I was a bit careful in the process, and it works absolutely fantastic now. So just a little bit of uh, food for thought as you're purchasing this camera. Make sure you do your research. Make sure you pull that lens off and take a close look at the camera itself and uh, make sure you're getting one that the um, mirror is still attached to the inner body of the camera. Okay, so let's look at a few reasons why you might wanna choose to look at the Canon 5D Classic. Firstly, the 5D Classic is a full frame sensor camera. So it comes with a 12.8 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. And this sensor is well known for its color science and the image output of the, of the sensor itself. In fact, portrait photographers have often referred to this camera uh, color science as being magical. So great tonality, great depth, and great overall image quality. The next reason you might want to purchase the Canon 5D Classic is the simplified menu system. It has everything you need and absolutely nothing you don't. So the ease of operation of this is absolutely next level, feels intuitive in the hand and easy to operate. Third thing is the massive library of Canon EF lenses, both from native Canon lenses to uh, third party lenses. There are so many EF lenses on the market and many of them are dirt cheap on the used market as well too. So lots and lots of lens options for this camera as well. And then yet another reason for choosing this camera is its raw image capture. So 
when you're shooting a raw image on a full frame sensor, you have incredible dynamic range allowing you to capture a significant amount of data even though it's a 12.8 megapixel sensor the raw image capture on this is actually quite sensational for a 20 year old camera okay so i wrote a few notes here to describe what I really like and what I've really enjoyed about shooting the Canon 5D Classic. And the first one is filmic-like image quality from the CMOS sensor, creating colors that are both warm and rich, while any noise created from the sensor leans more toward a grain-like appearance than digital noise. The next thing I liked was the slow methodical process due to the lack of live view and slow autofocus. This enabled me to wander and shoot in a bit of a therapeutic way being less concerned with shooting fast moving subjects and more concerned with shooting static scenes. The next thing I loved about this camera was its tactile, comfortable handling. Uh, the dials are easily accessible on the front to adjust your aperture or your shutter speed and even exposure compensation is at your fingertips. So this camera has been designed for professionals and you can tell that it has been. It's been well thought out and it's incredibly comfortable to shoot with. Now, often people take a look at modern cameras and they compare them to these 20 year old sensors. And the first thing they talk about is the actual resolution. Now, I'll be the first one to say that resolution can matter in some instances. If you're a professional and you're shooting very, very large format or large print ad work, you're likely going to be shooting with something in that 100 megapixel range. Uh, but 12.8 megapixels is actually suitable to print up to 11 by 14. So if you're a hobbyist or even if, even if you're a professional shooting uh, family portraits, under most circumstances, 12.8 megapixels is going to be more than adequate. In fact, sharing on the internet, you don't even need near that resolution to do so. So, And the really big benefit of that is storage space. The files are minute in comparison to some of the modern files on, uh, on newer mirrorless cameras or even some of the medium format cameras. The 12.8 megapixel files to me, I think, are, are absolutely perfect. The next thing I love about this system is the batteries. They have an incredibly long lifespan. In fact, I shot an entire weekend on the Canon 5D, probably shot two to 300 images, and I didn't even make it through the first battery. In fact, the batteries are spec to last almost 800 images, which is unbelievable. Okay, so another great reason you might wanna choose this camera is the full frame look. Anyone that shot full frame acknowledges the fact that these sensors have a unique ability to separate a subject from its background. And although I do acknowledge that bokeh doesn't equal great imagery, it is a tool that you can have in your tool belt to allow you to draw a viewer's eye to your subject in a unique way by separating it from the background. And full frame sensors paired with a fast prime lens do this better than any. Okay, let's talk about a few of the cons of the 5D Classic, because that's not all great. In fact, the 5D Classic, one of its major downfalls is its screen on the back. No live view. I know I talked about the pros of not having a live view slowing you down, but not having a live view that is accurate and you can use on a regular basis to actually compose and set your exposure is a bit of a downfall. Additionally as well, when you do take an image with this, the screen on the back of the camera does not give an accurate representation of your exposure. You get a bit of an idea, but overall it tends to look a bit washed out and overexposed on the back of your screen. So really the only way that you can use this camera is to trust the histogram. And so I generally put it in histogram mode so that I see a small example of the image and a larger version of the histogram so that I can really tell whether I have either over or under underexposed my image and just by using that seems to solve the issue, but overall the screen is not great at all. Okay, so the next con on my list are compact flashcards. Compact flashcards tend to be more expensive than their SD counterparts, plus they're larger, clunkier, and most people don't actually have compact flashcard readers to plug into whatever device that you wanna transfer the images to, so you have to figure a workaround around that. Um, they are available to purchase online, uh, but if you wanna just use what you have in the drawer, 
like any SD card reader that you have or the SD card reader that's on your laptop, that can be a bit of an issue. So additionally as well, uh, you have to really be careful when you're inserting compact flash cards into the Canon 5D Classic. I've heard, not experienced, but heard, you can actually bend the pins inside as well too. So when you're inserting a compact flash card, you have to be a bit careful. So my suggested workaround uh, with that is to actually just plug the camera directly into your laptop or computer and uh, transfer the images that way. That tends to work uh, really well for me and I just leave that compact flash card right in the camera itself. Okay, so the next con on my list is its ability to focus. Modern cameras have uh, continuous autofocus and tracking and all sorts of modern focusing methods with 100 plus focus points. The Canon 5D Classic has a total of nine. Six of them are only usable. And really the only one that I actually use is the center focus point. So in order to use this camera and utilize it well, you have to learn the focus and recompose methodology. And that was easy for me to learn because I use that all the time when I was a wedding shooter. And so as far as the focusing goes, it's a bit slow and a bit inaccurate, unless you're using a center focus point, which tends to work fairly well in most situations. All right, so the last thing on my cons list is the sheer weight of this camera. This thing is a literal tank. You could use this thing as a weapon if you were backed up against the wall. So if you're trying to pack this thing around all day long, traveling with it around your neck or in a bag, you're gonna absolutely feel this. And so I don't think it would be something that you'd be able to stealthily disappear on the streets when shooting images. So, but in my estimation, this camera is just too heavy to pack around for long distances. Okay, so in weighing out some of the options, the pros and the cons of the Canon 5D Classic, the value is still undeniable. For under $300, you can purchase yourself a full frame camera body. And that's absolutely incredible. So if you're looking for something to add to your camera collection, something that you're gonna take out occasionally and shoot, or even shoot every day, you won't go wrong with the Canon 5D Classic. The image quality out of this sensor has absolutely blown me away. As you've seen in some of the samples I've shown you, the colors are rich and they're warm, and it almost looks to me a little bit like portrait film, which is pretty exciting to me. And so all of my images I edited in Lightroom, and all I did to any of them was take the raw image, add the camera matching landscape profile in Lightroom, and adjust the white balance. That is it, that is all, and that's what you get on these images. So absolutely enjoyed shooting this camera while I was in Cannon Beach, and um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this review. And if you own the Canon 5D Classic, share with me your thoughts on it and maybe some tips and tricks on how I can get more out of this camera as I'm learning to shoot it as time goes on. So anyway, thanks for joining me in this episode of Island by Film. We'll talk to you soon.